Imperfect, the Roy Holiday story airs tonight on ESPN. Here's what to watch out for. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Go ahead and smash that like button and help this channel grow. We're primarily a baseball podcast channel. So if you like baseball content, this is where you want to be. And go ahead and subscribe as well. Please do us that favor, especially yeah. if you want to stay up to date on the latest baseball news and anything sports related. The, the biggest headlines, we're going to talk about it pretty much on a daily basis. Today, we we're talking about, as Luis mentioned in the opening, about the Roy Holiday documentary, uh, Imperfect, which drops tonight on East, on ESPN E60. I'm going to start the clock here so we give you 10 minutes or less. Um, and yeah, so... So some things after reading this Bob Nightingale article that he he posted yesterday and listening to Buster Only on the Michael K show yesterday, um, it sounds like they're going to really delve into some topics that we don't really hear so much about in, in baseball, uh, primarily the abuse that pitchers go through physically. Uh, they pitch every fifth day and uh, are, you know, the most violent motion on the baseball field. Um, when you're, when you're playing catch, for example, like if I don't play catch for a good four, three, four months, the first time I play catch, my arm is dead for a couple for, you know, for a couple of days. And I'm not even like going full strength. Imagine doing this every five days as a result, sounds like Roy holiday got addicted to some painkillers, some opioids. It seems like he was dealing with some depression and he was also taking amphetamines, which is kind of shocking to me. Isn't, isn't an amphetamine, a, a upper yeah, it's what I think it's the greenies that uh, players used to take back in the Willie Mays Hayes days. Yeah. So, so it sounds like he was taking the opioid to manage the pain, the amphetamine to keep himself up, I guess. And yeah. And the antidepressants to deal with whatever it is that he was dealing with personally. Go to sleep um, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that, like, I think that people, we like you said, we we view pitchers as kind of like. <clears throat> They always joke about pitchers and practice and stuff about not being the hardest workers and stuff like that. But I think I don't think people realize, like, if you ever took a physics class, the amount of force that you're putting on your shoulder, like the tension that's getting pulled out because you have a ball in your hand with gravity and everything, all that stuff. Take physics. It'll change your life. But I, I don't think we realize. And he, it's it's not just Roy how they like Tyler Skaggs last season uh, died of an overdose. I think it's 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 a problem that MLB is facing. Maybe they know a lot more than we'll ever know. Like I never, I in all of Roy Holiday's career, I never would have imagined that he had a drug addiction problem. Yeah, man. And I didn't know he had any sort of drug problem until he, until the day that he passed away, until the day that he died in that plane crash. So I wouldn't be shocked if this is like a, a even bigger issue underneath. Because I don't think it's just pitches. I think it's everyday players that have to take certain things in order to get themselves on the field every day. Yeah. And they're well, fighting what, for contracts as well. So you throw that into yeah. the mix. I mean, so it makes me wonder, like we, we think about performance enhancing drugs. We think about steroids, HGH, so on and so forth. We don't really think about opioids and painkillers. Would you consider that to be a performance enhancer? Because essentially it's allowing you to manage your pain so that you could come back and, and, and be at full force you know, in four days when it's your turn to pitch again. Yeah. Would you consider that to be a, a PED? Yeah. Like even if it's indirectly enhancing your performance, like if you took, if you have to take sleeping pills before the, the before the night of a, of a start so that you can get some sleep that def, that's definitely going to help your performance the next day. If you have to take a painkiller to numb a, a, a pain that you're feeling in your body to allow you to, to play at that high level that they're being asked to play, then yeah, I consider that, a form of enhancing your performance. And we've talked about in this show before in the past that not that we're pro steroids or performance enhancing drugs. I don't think that you should take any drugs of any kind unless you know what you're doing or, or some professional has prescribed it to you for some reason. I'm I'm on the same page with, with painkillers. I think that if it's being monitored by a team physician a medical doctor, like someone who went to medical school, went through residency, went through a fellowship and became a doctor, then it's okay. And I, and I would say the same for, for PEDs, HGH, you know, allow these guys to take it because A, you'll know, they'll, you'll know what they're taking. It's almost the same argument with legalizing marijuana. Like, yeah, I think marijuana should be legalized because then at least it can be under control. It, it can be controlled. It, it won't be laced with, with, you know, PCP or whatever, um, Dirt. the government collects taxes. It's monitored. It's, it's, you can take it in a safe way. Same thing with this. You can take steroids in a safe way. If it's, you know, wh when you, when 
People get prescribed steroids all the time. My great grandmother, you know, on my wife's side is taking steroids for something right now for her hands. Same thing with these guys. To keep your best product on the field, allow them to take it if it's prescribed by a medical doctor. And, you know, why not have a team doctor, you know, sitting on the bench just like they do in the NFL? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I actually, I actually have a rare skin condition called Lincus planus. I know it's, it's super random and it's rare. And I was prescribed a steroid because uh, the itching was so bad and the area that's exposed is so like it's it's like way more likely to contract some sort of like skin cancer from the sun. So I, I was applied. A, I had to apply a steroid to it. So steroids isn't so just like steroid isn't just like injecting yourself and coming out like Barry Bonds. <laughs> or like the Hulk. So wait, so you're telling me that when you rub this thing on yourself, what is it? The clear? Is it the clear from Balco? Is that what they gave you? The clear? It starts as a white paste and then it clears out once you rub it in. So could it, is could that it be... area more muscly than the rest of your body? I would show you if I if I would show you, but it, it looks pretty bad. So uh, no, it just kind of. I guess it killed off any of the fungus or bacteria that was on there. And now it's just like a it's like a skin. It's like my skin is forever stained. Yeah. Does that well, make sense? It's it came out kind yeah, of weird. The, I'm jo I'm joking, by the way, which I, you I know, know, but I, I hope know. people I, call, I, hope I, people I, know. I hear you, man. I hear you. <laughs> but the 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 players don't. When Barry Bonds and you know was injecting himself with whatever it is that he was injecting himself, that wasn't the reason why he became Barry Bonds. He went from he went from becoming a legendary player to like a almost like a character, like a like a cartoon character. It's what that what what taking the steroids did was help him recover quicker so that he can continue working out and continue get and continue getting bigger. Um, that's yeah, why players put, do these things. He still put the time in to get better. He's, right. He still put the time in. He he still had, you know, the steroids didn't help him time the ball better. It might have made it might have made it so that a double was now a home run for Barry Bonds. Um, yeah. If you look if you look at his stats before all of this, he was still an incredible, you know, hitter. But that's besides the point. What I'm trying to say is, um, and you got you got a tremendous product on the field. You got tremendous ratings off of it. Why not, in a safe way, hire physicians, you know, per team to administer these things in a safe and legal way? Then you know you'll you'll have the absolute best product on the field at all times. At the end of the day, these guys play every single day for about half the year. So. I feel like that's a legitimate reason to have to take these kinds of things, especially a pitcher, you know, yeah, like, given, you, given what they go through. And you know, like you asked me before, could, could painkillers and all this stuff be considered performance enhancing back in Mickey Mantle's days? I'm not saying this is like a direct correlation, but you could almost make the argument that him getting drunk before and after every game helped him numb some sort of pain. That guy went through pain in his career. Yeah. He dealt with injuries. You can almost make the argument that, <clears throat> him drinking himself to the point where he can no longer feel the pain and go out there is a form of enhancing himself in order to play. So, you know, people took greenies in the, in the sixties and the seventies or whatever it was. I don't know all of baseball history. Like I, like I mentioned other times in this, uh, in this show, I really they started say that, taking they say that Ruth took something back in the day, like, a I don't even want to make it up but some animal product or something that enhances performance. I mean, I, I can't, I can't I say that. that for sure, but I, I've, you know, I've read stuff like that before. But, but yeah, these that, are these are the things that are check here. So yeah, for real, Th these are the things that are going to be discussed in Roy Holiday's documentary tonight. Um, and it's just, I'm glad that it's going to be brought up because I think finally people are going to see that yeah, these guys may only play every fifth day, and you don't see them on the bench as much. But if they might take the the biggest toll of any player on the field aside from maybe the catcher who's you know squatting for almost four hours every night and it's gonna open up some eyes it's it's not a coincidence that tyler skaggs died and had opioids in the system and that roy halliday died and had opioids in the system i i'd be interested to find out how many pitchers are out there are addicted to to painkillers and it's a larger issue it's not that these guys are drug dealers or degenerates is they're they're managing something and they're doing it behind closed doors because it's frowned upon whether maybe it's, that's, yeah. yeah, whether whether it's the pressure of playing at a high level, you know, having anxiety to, to want to perform, um, it, it, it could be for a number of reasons. I just want to point out that Roy Holiday retired in 2013, and it wasn't until he passed away in 2017 that we found out he had a drug problem. So don't right. be shocked if today in MLB there is a big drug drug problem. We know that there's a drug problem with painkillers in the NFL. 
I don't think the MLB is any different. It, it probably isn't any different. We're we're running out of time here, but even in our amateur baseball team, our pitchers would like take sometimes a couple of Advil or Motrin to manage the pain a little bit. And this is amateur <laughs> yeah. baseball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. So um, that's not a big point. deal, but that's on a lower scale. Imagine what, what these guys do on a bigger scale. All right. Time's up. Don't forget to follow us at Hova Mojo and leave us a comment. What are you, what are you looking forward to in this Rory Holiday documentary? Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace. Thanks.